everyone, it's Nadia from Leo Dia Designs, and today we're creating patterns in resin. I have done this tutorial before a little while back, but I wanted to show it again because I really like how this piece turned out. And um, so as you can see, I'm actually working on a wooden board. It's like a canvas board and it's 16 inches in diameter. And what I did first is I sealed it with some black acrylic paint just to kind of seal that in and to make sure that we're going to minimize any um, kind of bubbles that might come through on the wood on, into our resin. And then I, once that was fully dry, I then uh, propped it up on some little canisters so that this board was not sitting directly on my table. And I had also underneath put some uh, liquid latex just to kind of on the back of it, just so that it would capture any drips or anything like that for this piece. So once all that was done, as you can see, I'm just laying on a layer of resin. Now, the resin that I am using is a one-to-one -one countertop. It has a working time of about uh, 20, 25 minutes, depending on how much I heat it. And I mixed mostly like a black mica with a little bit of a really dark blue mica, just to kind of give it a little bit of a richness to it. And so I spread that out and now as you can see, I am just using my torch to get rid of most of those bubbles. And then while that was waiting, I actually went ahead and I had mixed up the rest of the colors that I'm gonna be using on this piece. There was about four or five different colors. And as you can see, they will start popping up very shortly as I'm just mixing them a little bit off camera. This one's a glitter and it is purple. And I will list uh, the brands that I use at the end of this video, as well as in the description below the video, if you want to know what I'm using. So this one here is just straight glitter in resin. So, and it's a really beautiful purple. And then the next one is a custom mix that I made of a couple different greens. And uh, as you can see, I'm using, I put more of the glitter and a little bit less of the green, just because I'm trying to create, you know, kind of adjust the proportions of how much of each color I want showing in my pattern. So, and then I created again, a custom blue that I am just kind of laying in here. And again, I didn't want as much of the blue, but obviously as we lay these on top of each other, there will be, um, you know, some will take over the others and that's okay because this is going to get, um, the pattern is going to look really cool with all these different colors in it. So, and lastly, I have kind of a plum color and this one was a uh, pigment paste the rest were all mica powders and glitters then after I let that sit um, when I put after I put the kind of the stripes on I let that sit for about five minutes because again I don't have a lot of time to wait with my resin so you can see as I pull the popsicle stick through you can see how it's already kind of thicker and it's allowing, it's not really moving too much. Like I actually have to drag the popsicle stick through here. So the timing of this will depend on your resin. And again, if yours cures quickly like mine, you won't have to wait very long. By the time you finish mixing up all your colors, you're probably going to be ready to start doing this. So um, everything will start to start thickening, thickening and you'll be able to start adding your pattern in right away. And as you can see, I'm just taking my popsicle stick and I'm just pulling it through kind of in an S pattern or a wavy pattern because I want that peacock kind of feather look here. And there's no right or wrong here in terms of how much you're pulling um, your design through. You just want to make sure you're always doing it in pretty much the same direction, unless you're going for a completely different look. Course. So in this case, I wanted to continue making my kind of S waves always kind of from, from top to bottom. So this way it creates a really cool pattern. And again, you can also decide when you're done doing this. I'm actually going to be using this base as a clock. So I didn't want the background to be, you know, overpowering. So that's why I'm doing a quite a bit more blending here than maybe if you were kind of trying to create just a finished piece that was maybe going to just hang on the wall. You might not need to go through this as often or as much as I'm doing it, but I did want to kind of have this blend a little bit more than I would typically want to, just because again, I don't want it to be overpowering for the design that I'm going to be painting on here. So anyways, you can see just about done. And once I'm done here, that's it. I just have to let it cure. And here's a quick video of it um, right after I had finished um, adding the design. And then I also have a little clip coming up of 
what it looks like after it was fully cured. And you'll see that here. Here we go. And you can see that all the, you know, the details of those patterns are still in there even after curing. So it's just a matter of getting that timing right. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this video and don't forget to come back because I will be continuing this clock and adding some hand painted designs to it. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be really cool. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.